Hey everyone, welcome back to Chill Vibes Only. Today we're going to be talking about the idea of monogamy and just challenging some of our beliefs around it. I recently read a book called Mating in Captivity by Esther Perel. I highly, highly recommend it. It talks all about desire and issues around desire with our partner and why people cheat and infidelity and monogamy. Um, and it helped me really challenge a lot of the beliefs I had around monogamy and made me think differently about how I might want to pursue my future relationships. And so I wanted to share some of those ideas and some of those thoughts that I had while reading the book and then also kind of engage with you guys and talk about what you think about monogamy. So please feel free to leave a comment down below with your thoughts on monogamy and let me know what you think about what I'm about to talk about because I know that it's kind of a belief that's been so ingrained in our culture, especially in North America, that you know, you meet one person, you marry them, you stay with that person for life and that's your partner and then you kind of rely on that person for every aspect of your life, right? So you rely on them for emotional support, maybe you rely on them for financial support, for companionship, for sexual desire. So there's a lot of things that we kind of place on one person through that monogamy structure um, that actually isn't really feasible or realistic I would say nowadays and so that's why I want to talk to you guys today about this idea of monogamy and how we can potentially challenge it and what open relationships mean and how changing the way that we look at relationships might actually help us spark more desire and have better relationships with our partners. So I want to start off by saying I've always been in a committed relationship. I've never been in an open relationship but I was looking online and found out that one in five Americans have actually been in an open relationship. So to me that number was pretty surprising considering just how taboo it has been for the last couple years. But now I think that we're moving into a different wave and a different way that we look at relationships in general. And also as women, I think that we are getting more agency and more freedom and more independence. And so we have more choice when it comes to how we want our relationships to look. So for example, you know, heterosexual relationships for a long time in history was, was the norm and what was expected of people. Um, and now we're constantly challenging that with same-sex marriages um, and open marriages and open relationships. I think that the more we move forward, we're going to start to adapt to a model that's actually working better for where we're at in society now versus where we were before. Because if you think about it, the idea of monogamy came out of, you know, women not having a lot of agency over themselves, right? Like we weren't as independent as we are now. You got married to someone so that you could be financially supported and you could build a family and have that safety net. Um, whereas now, you know, we're independent. We don't need to marry someone to be financially stable and secure. We can have our own lives. We don't have to have children. We don't have to build this family. So we don't actually have to be in these monogamous relationships anyways if we don't want to. When you think about a healthy, successful relationship, obviously you want to care for that person, you want to be able to rely on that person, but sometimes I think that we can rely on our partners too much, right? We demand them to be our best friends, you know, we look for them for stability, we share bank accounts with them, we share everything with our partner, they become almost part of us, and when our partners become part of us, we lose our own individual self and that separateness, and then that's when relationships can get in that stage of like, dullness I would say right because you know everything about your partner and maybe that intimate strong bond is there but the desire has now gone away and you're looking for that elsewhere because our minds are programmed too into thinking about wanting the next best thing right so if we think about like consumerism you, as soon as you get something that you want it's nice and it's awesome but then you want something else right it's that craving mentality and I'm not saying like everybody needs to be in an open relationship, that's not my point at all. All I'm saying is that we want to challenge some of those beliefs and think about ways a relationship might work for you. So maybe it is that you guys can flirt with other people, or maybe you're allowed to sleep with other people, or maybe you are allowed to go on dates with other people, or maybe you're in a heterosexual relationship but you're allowed to have same-sex relationships with other people if you're looking into becoming bi-curious or want to explore that part of yourself. There's no hard and fast rules and there's no one-size-fits-all for everybody, right? It's your relationship and I just want you to start to consider these options. Not that you have to do it, right? If you're really happy and you're committed relationship that's awesome I'm just saying that if you're having these thoughts or if you're thinking oh I wonder what it would be like to do this or to go off and be with that person I don't want you to think that that's a bad thing or that's not right because you're in a committed relationship because the whole concept of that commitment is kind of not realistic for our society anymore 
and doesn't mean that you have to go that way or to take that route in your relationships. You can try other things and be open to other ways of creating a relationship. If it's an open relationship or if it's just kind of experimental stuff, find something that works for you. Don't just go off of the norms of society, right? If you're asexual and your partner is someone who's really sexual, think about that. You can't offer them that part of you, right? So finding other ways to make your relationship work and to be healthy and strong doesn't always have to fall into the lines of monogamy and I would highly recommend that you challenge those beliefs and see if the relationships you're a part of right now is what you actually want and what's bringing you the most joy and your partner the most joy or if there are other options that you might consider that would help you guys improve your relationship such as being in an open relationship or experimenting with you know flirtation or being more open-minded to having more sexual partners if you wanted to or you know maybe you're really happy with your committed relationship and you want to stay with that that's also okay it's just finding what works for you and challenging those beliefs that are so ingrained in us that we you know just think we have to choose when we don't actually have to we have many other choices so yeah very curious to hear you guys thoughts on monogamy um please leave a comment down below or dm me at cbo wellness i love Love chatting with you guys about this stuff. Um, if you've read the book, let me know your thoughts on it. It is called Mating in Captivity by Esther Perel. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe because that really helps the channel and I'll see you for another video shortly.